The third type of chart for the series is a scatter plot. This first version will be on the simple side, and the next video will cover a more complex version. Thanks for joining me. Let's get learning. For scatter plot data, let's start with pulling in two of our spreadsheets like always one data and one name, and make a large rectangle to hold our data. You can set the trim paths if you want. Go ahead and create a text layer for our X axis data, which will be the days, center align it, and format it however you like. But make sure to keep it small. Connect in our days sheet into the string attribute, add it to a duplicator set to linear horizontal distribution, connect the row count attribute from our scatter amount sheet into this duplicator's count attribute and then position it as needed. For the amount axis, duplicate the day's text layer and rename it to whatever you need it to be. Create a line and format it to be a thin dotted line and connect the width attribute of the rectangle that we created into the line's length. Group the amount text and the line together and position the text layer to the left of the line. With this group selected, alt click on the duplicator icon, set that to linear vertical distribution and make sure to keep the size mode to fit. And for the count, you can add as many segments as you want. I'm going to do four. Increase the size attribute until it fits the height of the graph. For the amount text input, disconnect our days sheet because we want to use the max number of our sets. We can figure this out in our Google sheet by using the function max range. Duplicate the scatter amount spreadsheet utility and rename it to Y axis max. Then set the column title to set one max and make sure to check fixed row. Next, click on the little plus next to the string attribute in our amount text and add a string generator. Go ahead and set the padding and precision to whatever you need. You may need to adjust the positioning of your text layer. Right click on the number attribute and add a number range. Set the source minimum to zero and connect our Y axis duplicator count attribute into the source max with an expression of minus one. This is because the count is four, but indexes in cavalry start with zero, not one. So four indices is zero through three. Our output minimum can be zero and then connect our Y axis max sheet into the output max. Last thing to do is connect the index context from our Y axis duplicator into the value attribute of our number range. With this setup, you can adjust the Y axis duplicators count to add more or less horizontal information bars as you want. And if you're learning something, consider liking and subscribing to feed the algorithm. All right, let's get scattering. This is actually the easy part. Create an ellipse or polygon and format it however you like and name it point. With that layer selected, Alt click on the duplicator icon and name that duplicator data points. Set the distribution to linear horizontal and connect the size and count attribute from our X axis duplicator into this duplicator's size and count attributes. In our scatter amount sheet, make sure that the column title attribute is set to set one. We need to remap this data to fit the height of our graph. So let's set the remapping attribute to number range with the source minimum being zero and connecting our Y axis max sheet output into the source max attribute. The output minimum can stay zero and then connect the size attribute of our Y axis duplicator into the output max. Finally, plug the scatter amount sheets output into our data point duplicators shape position Y attribute. This should position the points vertically where they need to be relative to the data points duplicator position. You'll most likely need to adjust the duplicator's Y position to get things to be visually correct in the graph. Since we know the maximum value of this set is 95, we can just align the highest dot to our top information line. And now you've got your scatter plot. But sometimes just looking at dots, it can be hard to tell what's going on. We can add a quick line based on the points to visualize it better. In our quick add menu, search for the points to path layer and name it visual line. You can style this visual line however you want. In the visual line shape tab, change the point source attribute to sub mesh and drag in our data points duplicator. And boom, our data is easier to understand. For animating, it's the same process as the bar charts and the pie charts. You can check out those videos for more detail. And for the visual line, once you've got the other animation set up, you can just animate the trim paths like this. In the next video, we will cover less linear scatter plots.